When it comes to a brake bleed on any bike, what most people sweat about is whether they have all the right like syringes and hoses and all this kind of stuff. What you need to have first in your mind is how it works fundamentally and then get technical. So fundamentally, let's look at what the inside of your brake caliper looks like when it's got air in it. If you look right here, we've got a nice, think of this as a model of the brake caliper right there, and it's got an air bubble. This clearly needs to be bled. So we're gonna push fluid in right now because we wanna bleed it. So watch what happens. See how that, see how the, see how the air bubble's going nowhere? All it's doing is transferring fluid from here to here because this needs to be oriented correctly, which I'll show you that right now. Your, the bleed port needs to be oriented facing straight up in order to function properly, all right? And then you can push fluid in and you notice that the air is going out. So now we see that the orientation of the caliper and to a great extent the lever are absolutely essential in order to make sure that the air is able to escape. Because the air bubble will always rise to the absolute top. Just think of a level, same principle. Of course we need to get all the air out because air compresses and fluid does not. And uh, what I've made here is uh, a little demonstration of an air spring. This would be like a front shock, which air springs are cool when you're going down a bumpy trail. But when you grab a, uh, a handful of lever and, uh, and it, you get an air spring, it's gonna be a bad day. When we come over to this caliper, we can see that I've already installed a bleed block. That is absolutely a must. You have to take the pads out. I don't care if, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna burp a little bit of air out of it. If you get brake fluid on the pads, they are smoked and you will have to get new ones. Don't play any games, just take the pads out and put a bleed block in there. The pistons have to be fully retracted because remember, we're trying to make sure there's no air in the system. So we don't wanna give air a place anywhere to hide. So by fully retracting the pistons, putting the bleed block in there, we ensure that 100%. If we remember what we were just showing on the test bench, what we saw, um, the orientation of this caliper, let's, let's take a look at it real quick. See this line right here? This line is in exactly the wrong orientation. This is going, this is the line coming out because we're pushing fluid from back here. So where do we want the line? We want the line on top. So we need to unbolt this caliper. There, if you were trying to bleed this with this in this orientation, if we look up here in this cup, okay, you see how the cup is uh, nice and uh, straight up and down? That's exactly the way we want that, okay? This right here is a disaster. You would just, as we showed, as we demonstrated, you would simply be pushing fluid right into this area right here and leaving a giant air bubble right in the top. This video has to do more with the uh, principles of brake bleeding and it's not really a, uh, a primer on any one system, okay? But I can tell you right now, the principle here is when you're sucking fluid up into the syringe, do everything you can to make sure you don't aerate it. That means don't hurry up and pull up on the plunger as fast as you can, really ease it in. And if you start seeing some aeration happening, uh, mineral oil, uh, isn't quite as bad as dot fluid for that. Um, from my experience, you just go ahead and sit it down somewhere where it's sitting upright and uh, let all the air bubbles slowly filter out and collect. So anyway, also, uh, if you've got different kinds of systems you're dealing with, if you've got a dot system and then mineral oil system and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff, do not mix and match the syringes, okay? We do not want to, you don't want to put a dot fluid, of any, any amount of DOT fluid in, uh, in a mineral oil system, vice versa, whatever it is. If whatever some don't I don't care what people say <laughs> well you could actually put one in the other and it but not the no, don't do it obviously you want to make sure there's no air bubbles in your syringe whatsoever like if you see even the slightest you have to get it out immediately um, you don't need that and then right here in this hose you're gonna push a little bit of air into the system initially because you can't get all the air out of the hose but I like to push it right up to the very bitter end right there all right, before I come in here and open up this port right here, with any bleed screw, I don't care if you're working a car, a motorcycle, a clutch system, this system, open up the bleed screw or the bleed port just enough, 
that it will flow fluid freely. Don't open it wide open, okay? Because what can happen is if you open it up far enough, it can actually leak air or even suck air is really what it's doing in between the, through the threads of the screw. Okay. Cause it's threaded in. Trust me, it can happen. And, uh, if it's going to happen to anybody, it'll happen to you because you have my luck. We need to make sure we got a nice tight fit on the syringe as well, because we don't want to have any kind of air leaking, air sucking, whatever it is, fluid leaking out all the way around it while we're trying to perform this job. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and open the bleed port up just a little bit like I said before and I'm gonna see if it flows and there we go I can hear it flowing already or gurgling lots of nice noises coming up from the front as the air goes right out of the system now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to manipulate I'm gonna manipulate this caliper because I need to manipulate it all the way down. Okay, you guys can see that I'm manipulating the caliper as I'm pushing fluid in the whole time. This must be oriented up because remember the air needs to go out. So the bubbles are coming up to the top and going out as I continue to push fluid in from the bottom. And there we go. Got the caliper bolted back in place and now i'm going to go up here and i'm going to grab a big handful of lever feels great you can see that it's not going all the way to the bar by any means and let me show you what's going on back here uh, i've got this bleed block in here that has the split in it so you guys can see the caliper operating right there see that you can see it squeezing that like crazy so that is going to be once i get the brake pads in there and the rotor it's going to have extremely good feel uh, and then all the modulation you'll ever feel is uh, going to be in the lines and not because you have some residual air bubbles in there or something like that. Once again, the modulation in these systems is, is mostly dialed into the lines because the brake lines themselves, how much they resist uh, expansion when all that pressure is put on is kind of what gives you that feel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, basic principles of brake bleeding. And uh, please like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Facebook, like us, uh, Reels, uh, love us. <laughs>